Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try our hand at an example. Here we have the function f of x equals x squared minus 4. We're supposed to grab that function, its inverse, and find the points where they intersect. So first of all, graphing the function isn't that difficult. f of x is equal to x squared, simple parabola with the, origin, with the vertex at the origin, but with the minus 4, the vertex come down to this point right here, minus 4. And so then we know if we then set this equal to 0, 0 is equal to x squared minus 4, we'll find the two roots of the quadratic equation, so 0 equals x plus 2 times x minus 2, which means that it crosses the x-axis at plus 2 and minus 2. So we see that it crosses there, there, and there, so this then allows us to graph the parabola. Not too bad, a little bit too far to the left here, but that's quite all right. So there's our parabola for the function y equals x squared. Notice that it's not a one-to-one -one function, which means that its, uh, its inverse is not going to be a function. Now, how do we graph the inverse? Well, first of all, we can, we can draw the y equals x, x line. That's the 45-degree line, like this. So this is the y equals x line. We come back on the other side right here. Like that. All right. And notice that if, and let me look for my green pen, notice that if the vertex is at minus 4 on the x-axis, it will be at minus 4 on the y-axis. That means that the vertex of, the, of the, the graph that is represented by the inverse of the function is going to start at this point right there. Now, we know that this inverse of the function will cross the y equals x line at the very same point as the function itself, and it should cross there as well. So that means that if I now graph this, and also it probably will cross there and there, so that means that my, uh, I guess I'm slightly off on this direction, so there you go, and then on this side, I need to go to this point right there, and that point right there, and like this. So that would be the inverse of the function, f inverse, of the function is the green line. So notice that it crosses the y equals x line at the same place where the function crosses it and over here as well. So that's how you know that you have a graph that is fairly representative. Here's the function f of x. So this is f of x. And then here we have it, <coughs> excuse me, the inverse of the function. And you know that the vertex, vertex here is at minus 4, which means the vertex here is at minus 4. So now the question is, what are these two points right there. Where are the two points of intersection between the function and the inverse of the function? We do know that in all cases, y equals x. So what we could do, oh, I, I guess I should be <coughs> minus 4 there. That's the function. All right. So what we could do is we could set y equal to x. So here we have the function y equals x squared minus 4, and we know that y equals x. So then I can replace y by x, so we get x equals x squared minus 4, or 0 equals x squared minus x minus 4. Unfortunately, we can't, gra we can't uh, factor that one, so we have to use the quadratic formula that x is equal to minus b, which is 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 squared, minus 4 times a times c, which is a minus 4, all divided by 2a, which is 2. So we get x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of, that's a positive 16 plus 1, that's 17, divided by 2. And the square root of 17, that's about equal to maybe about 4.2 or something like that, close enough. So here that would be, uh, that would be equal to 5.2 divided by 2. That would be about approximately 2.6. Or the negative, negative 4.2 plus 1, that's negative 3.2 divided by 2. That would be a minus 1.6. There we go. All right. That about right? 4.2, 5.2 divided by 2 is 2.6. 4.2 minus 1 is 3.2, 1.6. Yep, so those are the two points for x. And of course, since y equals x, that also will be the y value. So the two points where they cross, that would be at 2.6 comma 2.6, that should be a decimal point right there, and the other point would be minus 1.6 and minus 1.6. Can we find those two points? Sure enough, 
There's our first point right there, would be minus, minus 1.6. I keep putting a comma there, 0.6 like that. Comma, minus 1.6, that's one of them. And over here, that would be the point 2.6, comma 2.6. Oh, that's a decimal point, too many curves there. There we go. And that is how we find the two points of intersection between the function and its inverse, realizing that y equals x, so we take the function, we replace y by x, we solve for x, and of course, whatever x is, y is the same thing, and so those are the points of intersection between the function and its inverse, and they always will be on the line y equals x. And that is how it's done.